guys we're back playing Final Fantasy X HD Remake like you saw in the last part I, I pulled a new move and actually died to Kamari so I didn't save recently so I, there was a lot to like, go back through so I did that off screen I didn't think anybody wanted to sit there and watch me do the closer trials and everything again after going through the course. so we're back here and this time I will beat beat Kamari for sure I did put in my levels, not that that really makes any difference in this fight. It's a little bit of difference. The main the main thing I messed up was I didn't notice that he had two attacks, uh, just because I wasn't paying any attention, and I needed to heal. Honestly, if you don't heal, it really is one of the hardest fights. Really, because it doesn't... It's very set up, specifically. So I'm back at the part where I messed up. So he actually puts me a lot lower. If I had this amount of hit points, I would have would have healed for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and use a high potion. Just to make sure I have full hit points. You notice using items is actually a quicker action than just regular attacking. So he only got one attack instead of the two we've gotten. And of course I could have That's enough! This time I could have just attacked him in, in one, likely anyway. But Using that potion, save, because I don't, I didn't want to die again. Even though I did save right before the save point here. Ugh, what's with that guy? Kimari Ronso, of the Ronso tribe. He's learned the fiend's way of fighting. That's not what I meant. He's another Yuna's guardian. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes we don't understand him either. Kimari doesn't talk much anyway. Mm. But. He has protected me since I was a child. Hmm. Huh. Alright, so... If, if it, I sound a little, little different, like the game volume's a little lower, or I'm a little louder, I'm actually still kind of playing around with the, the sound settings to see what uh, works best. Um, now we go on this little track where there's a couple more tutorials about the other characters in the party. A flyer! That's your to prove, true? Why don't we let our summoner show us what she's made of? So this is telling you that you can switch people anytime you want in the battle. Uh, so we're gonna switch to Yuna, who is our summoner. Show us what your training is. Okay. Everybody who partakes in the battle actually gains experience. As long as they attack, unfortunately they can't just have been in the battle. They have to attack or defend. Or do some kind of action to gain experience. Balfour is actually one of my favorite summons in, in the entire game. Uh, mainly because he's really unique, then he's not in like every single uh, Final Fantasy installment, like Ifrit or uh, Shiva. Um, so he's, he's a little, little different than what you're normally used to. And he's kind of cool, he's got the Sonic wings that slows down the uh, One thing I'm actually glad why I lost to Kamari was it allowed me to rem remember something I'd completely forgotten that I actually mentioned was the, the dog in town. Uh, after the closer trials and you actually gain uh, Valifor, you can use, you can go find the dog and when you talk to it, it drops a key item which actually gives Valifor his second overdrive. He is the only Aeon in the entire game who has a second overdrive. It's a lot powerful and it attacks a single target rather than so it's very useful against some some bosses that don't have minions. So I'm really really actually grateful that I, I pulled a stupid move and lost to Kamari. But I find it funny that Kamari is really the first fight that you can lose and get a game over to when he's really a party member. So I'm gonna dispatch this pretty quickly. Sometimes in the fight you can actually get your overdrive uh, charged and it allows you to use it of course. And the fight usually ends with you using your overdrive. Uh, but that time of course it didn't happen. It mainly depends. The The quickest way to charge an overdrive with Aeon is having them dodge an attack. Uh, which didn't really happen. So. Another one of those. No problem. Leave this one to me, huh? Say goodnight, bird. 
Lose is showing you special attacks, and Waka uses uh, status effect attacks. This one made him dark, so he's, he's gonna miss. At the moment, there's only all the heroes learn their gain overdrive with what's called stoic. Um, but it's more anytime they take damage, they they charge their overdrive. Uh, one thing that's really cool about the overdrive system of this game, uh, there's different statuses of overdrive, and you gain the different statuses by having different characters do different things, such as you gain warrior when your character attacks so many times, and warrior charges whenever you attack an enemy and deal damage to an enemy, and then you like victor for having a party member in the fight when you win so many times, and just there's, there's something like 20 of them, so there's all sorts of different ways to gain overdrive. So the game kind of caters to how you want to play. I'm actually summoning Balfour here, even though I didn't really need to because he has darkness. But I want to get the overdrive charge, that way I can use it um, in a boss battle that's going to come up here in just a little bit. Unfortunately, unlike the characters, if an Aeon has a full overdrive charge and they get defeated, they actually lose all of their overdrive, where the main characters will keep, keep the overdrive that they had when they died. I think it's a, a little balancing, uh, so that you can't just charge your overdrive. I, so you can't just summon your Aeons, charge their overdrives, and let them die. It it makes you it forces you to either dismiss them or use the overdrive. Kinda make these battles go faster and actually gonna use the weaknesses. Uh, a lot of times when I'm just playing by playing normally, I'll just kinda hack and flash away. But of course it's harder to, to play against the weaknesses that the game teaches you. At least until later in the game where where they matter a lot less. Now I'm out of the areas where I can get random battles, uh, so it's primarily going to be talking for for a little portion of the game. Um, there's a save point on the the boat, so I don't need need to save here, but I, I will probably be saving a little more often just in case. So while everyone kind of gets here, I'm gonna talk to some people here, give you some items. Nothing super great, but, you know, extra items are extra items. I always kind of find it interesting when they have these, like, cutscenes, but yeah, you still can control your character. There's nothing you can really do. You can't talk to anybody. You still have control of your character. There's another one here, uh, after. A, a little bit, a little bit further into the game, you get to control your character than you do. I don't know if it was just easier to program that Goodbye. way, or, or what it was. I thought the graphics increase on the PS3 version of this was actually quite quite good. Uh, but playing on the, the, the PS4, they, I, I'm actually really surprised how much better it is from the PS3 to the PS4. I, I kind of figured they'd just eat, not waste the time to really increase much, maybe a little bit, and then play it as being increased. But it, but it does actually look quite well. Hmm. 
I would almost go as far to say it look, looks well enough that if they uh, release the game now, uh, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't look as great as you know games that they do release now, but it could pass off as a lower quality game. I just being sitting here being a pervert. Think of it, I haven't told you where we're going. First to Kilika Island. Then we change boats and head for Luca. For that though, Yuna's gotta pray at the temple. I'll be guarding. We'll be praying for the Auroch's victory too, so you come along, yeah? <sighs> that seems important. Great plan. The grand scheme of things. Hey, it is a great plan. Don't look at me. There's a couple other cutscenes that happen up there, but I'm gonna actually see if a certain item is is on here yet. I don't think so. Later in the game, there's a Albed primer in in there, uh, but I think it actually takes either a little bit later in this area we'll be before it spawns, or actually the next time you come on the boat. Word is that summoner's got noble. I heard she's Lord Braska's daughter. You don't say. Lord Braska's daughter? Hmm. So, is Yuna's father famous or something? She's the daughter of High School. Lord Braska did. You is the heir to a great legacy. It's tough <sighs> when your father's famous. Huh? Walker's a bit lacking in the imagination department. Huh? <laughs> Thanks, Lulu. I'll keep that in mind. Crowd actually disperses a bit. I'm going downstairs real quick. Oh, those fascinating clothes you're wearing. Yeah! Filthy, filthy. These won't sell. All me name's not a waka. Don't look like you got much money. I've no business with you. Adam, who do you think you are? Awaka the 23rd, merchant extraordinaire. Awaka the who? Don't know me? Well, not many do. Not yet. So Awaka is the guy that will show up many, many, but some many times deny throughout Say, the rest you... of the game. Uh, of course, like he said, he's a merchant. But I don't want to give him any kill. Yeah. Not until he actually has items, anyway. There's really nothing down here. What, but a what the heck is that? What, what the heck is what? Chocobos. What is this place? The power room, like it says on the door. Yeah, but why the big birds? What's so strange about chocobo power? Chocobos? Those are chocobos? What? You've never seen a chocobo? What kind Oops. of backwater island did you come from, anyway? <sighs> Miracles and oddities were starting to become daily routine on this trip. And there's now the primer there. L equals C. See, I'm pretty sure it's the next time you're it, you choose to come on the boat is when the other Albert primer in the cabin's log is appears so that's actually optional you don't have to come on the boat to get that but if you do so if you kick this suitcase you get some free potions 